Welcome to the introductory video about HiQ. So in the HiQ operating system, you may want to do some software development. Software development is typically done in C++ throughout the whole operating system. So it's really important to have the right tools installed. Uh, the way you go and find development environments is if you go into the desk bar, click on applications and click on HiQ Depot. In there, you can look for different software packages. So for example, I can select development, type in IDE, and I can see a variety of integrated development environments. So there's KDevelop, Qt Creator, Yab, if you're into using the Yab language that's uh, native to HiQ, but also Pladin. So this is the project that I maintain. So I can click on install there and it goes and fetches the package from the internet and downloads and installs it. And then I can click on open Pladin. When you first launch Pladin, you get a whole range of different things you can choose. So I see my recent projects. Funny enough, Pladin is also developed in Pladin, but I can create a new project, open a project, and so on. For now, I'm just going to show you around the interface. So I'll choose an existing application. I'll do future videos for different types of projects. So we'll click on that. It gives me my project window. So my project window on the left unsurprisingly shows elements of my project. So I see source files, but for each one of these um, different groups, what's also loaded is the header files. So I can go up to the top here and say update dependencies, it then scans all the files for imports and will refresh the dependencies on the left hand side. So that can be very, very useful. What I can also do, as you see at the bottom, there's a status bar. So if I go to build, make project, I can see a whole variety of errors in there. This is something that I'm working on at the moment. What I can do is I can open a source file. So we'll click and open that. And what that will do, interestingly, is there's no editor built into Pladin. But what it will do is it will launch the source code editor that is the preference set on your system. Here, I'm using Coder. So this is Coda, it's created by Casper. But by default, you'll get LPE, or the Programmer's Editor. To change that, click on the leaf, go to Preferences, select File Types. On the left-hand side, if you select Text, and then look down at Source Code, you see a variety of different files there, so all the files that you're going to want to edit. And then you select your preferred application. By default, this will be PE. You can set Vim if you, you know, glutton for punishment, uh, or you can select Coda. I tend to default to Coda these days. There's some good integration between Coda and Paladin. So, for example, when there's an error and you double click on that error in the build window, not only will it open the file, but it will also jump to the exact line and column of that error in Coda. So, that's why I tend to use Coda instead of PE. A whole set of options in here though so new project old project are pretty straightforward i can open recent projects i can also find and open a file within my projects i can look at global program settings i can select my default source control and my default home for all my projects that's one that you'll probably want to set straight away because it defaults to mercurial rather than git most people these days tend to use git Backups is an interesting feature, so if you are uh, just a bit worried about making a quick edit to a file, you can just click one button and it backs up the entire project to a zip file on the desktop. Within each project, I can go to settings. So in here, I can have build paths. So if I've got multiple directories with files in, I can select those files for my include paths. I can select the type of application. We'll talk about this when we talk about new projects later on. But by default for Pladin, this is obviously an application. I tend to build with debugging information and profiling mission in as well. But if you want extra compiler options and linker options past the G++, then you can put them in here as well. If I want to compile against some particular libraries, I can change the system libraries used. This will search the system and user libraries which I have installed on my particular system. It's remembered the size of window from when I have a bigger screen. I can select those in here. Typically, you won't have many selected. Uh, indeed, 
if you've got lib standard C++ and list sub C++, you should have removed them. They're added automatically by the system. <clears throat> I can also find any particular symbol within all my project files. So if there's a particular function, I'm not sure exactly which of my classes it's come from. I can search for that text throughout. So in here, for example, if I <clears throat> want to search for an implementation of the message received function, which is a very common one in Haiku development for passing messages between windows and controls. You can look at all these, double click them to open them in Coda, or PE, if you're that way inclined. And as you can see, it jumps direct to the line where that has been found. I'm currently working on a quick find feature, which I'm going to add in the next week or so. In here as well, there's various source control options. So you can uh, commit your changes, you can add messages, you can push and pull changes from the different types of repositories. The group feature really is just for organizing your own source code within the editor. It can come in quite handy. The dependencies subfolders where the headers are, that tends to be managed automatically by Paladin. I can also click on show project folder, which will open the project folder within my tracker application so I can go in and look at all the different types of files within there. To build I can run make project, I can run the application directly from Paladin as well and I can also debug that application. But interestingly I can also generate a make file because not everybody will have Paladin installed for some strange reason. Um, but if you don't have Paladin installed you can generate a make file for that. And you can also force the entire project to rebuild one of the interesting things that the project supports is FastDep and Ccache. So those two packages, if you install them with PackageMan, which you can do from the command line, will enable quicker building of large projects. So for example, if I go in here and select Terminal, I can do PackageMan install FastDep. And that's just like using the HiQ depot, but on the command line. So it's very much like uh, apt-get from the kind of Ubuntu world. I'm not going to do that now, but if I wanted I could go and install that. There's also a variety of tools in here because as developers we know that our memory is horrific. So I can go in, I can look up ASCII codes in here which is quite useful. I can uh, see the error window which comes up automatically anyway when you start doing a compile. Uh, I can test regular expressions in here. And as I mentioned before, back up project and find uh, particular symbols. I don't think they're going to be in here. Uh, there we go. So you can look up different symbols in the different libraries if you wanted as well. Quite useful if you come across a random error. Uh, something that occasionally happens is if the application crashes, then you can terminate the application or you can debug an application as well. So I click on debug. It launches the debugger app which comes built into Haiku. And I can step through here and see that okay, my symbol finders crashed on a particular function. Uh, this particular one was introspecting a library by the looks of it. And then from there you can kill symbol finder. There's also set software licenses, so this isn't set on my machine. But you can set a variety of licenses in here and include them to all your source control uh, source code files as well. But Paladin is a pretty cool tool. There's lots of settings to it. A lot of things happening in the background that you don't realize. Um, so it is quite good to use this for C++ development. So I would heartily recommend you go and download and install Paladin. In the next few videos, I'll go through uh, templates and new features being developed in Paladin as we speak.